Hi everyone, this is Go to Luke. I'd like to uh, demonstrate to you a uh, permanent magnet motor that is mostly using the principle of the permanent magnet. And uh, I had shared this uh, motor design uh, I think about two years ago. You can find it in my videos. And uh, I've decided to pursue it and uh, it doesn't matter what people say. I have a feeling it could do something uh, interesting. So let me show you the principle. We have here a uh, coil that's uh, actually wound by Fowler. Doesn't need to be, I just like to wound my, co my coils by Fowler now because it gives you the flexibility to uh, do different things with it. And all I've got here is a activation switch here. I'm just going to press a momentary switch. And I've got my amp meter here with a uh, 6 volt battery, the 6 volt battery is at 6.4647 and the amp meter will show us how many amps the uh, coil is drawing when we put down the switch and hold it down obviously and um, I've got a core here that I made and I'm going to stick that core inside the uh, coil there and I'm going to hit the switch and as you see nothing exciting basically a solenoid uh, action then this and you'll see here the amps will be about 1.53. All right, so nothing exciting there. But what gets exciting is here I have two, two, whoa, two pieces of neodymium magnets here. I identified the poles. And what I'm going to do here, this side here is the south pole. I'll put the south pole there. And this side here is also a south pole. And I'll put the south pole there. And um, now I'm going to activate the solenoid once again. As you see, it is very, very aggressive now. Uh, it's very different than the previous. The previous, we hardly had any movement. And now if we show as well, this uh, coil here on its own weighs 80 grams. 80 grams. And now I hit the switch. Nothing. It's not lifting, nothing at all. So it's just barely capable of uh, pushing that uh, solenoid out. Okay, so again, we put our magnets. Oops, get the magnets right, south to south. And our solenoid is very aggressive. Oh, my switch uh, popped out here. Uh, the circuitry on this uh, project board here has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now, I'm just using it for this little micro switch that I have here. So again, as you see, very aggressive. And now we'll stand it up and see. It's capable, okay, right now, of lifting that coil and holding it up completely at that distance with 1.5 amps, right? Okay, so the next step I'd like to show you is mounting it and putting it in a motor design. Now my motor design will be a solenoid design, a solenoid motor design. So it's basically back and forth motion with a crankshaft turning it into a rotation uh, motor. And now I've just added that, just that piece of uh, steel here at the back. And we'll check and see what happens. So again, now I'm getting actually more pressure up on this here than I was with just the magnet. See how light it is there? Just by adding it on there, now it's become stronger again. Now what is happening in this motor design here? How it works is if we have two uh, same pole magnets, south to south, Okay, they're repelling themselves, pushing away. They don't stick together. All right, so we have these south poles, south poles together, sandwiched between this piece of laminated uh, transformer laminations. And <clears throat> what happens here is when we activate the coil, we have here a south pole on this side of this coil. We have a south pole magnet on this side. So the south pole, south pole will push itself. 
But what's happening on this side of the, the coil here, this is a north pole. So this end here is a south pole. So the north will actually attract to the south. So when we hit the switch, we have double whammy going on in this coil. We have the push of the opposing poles, and we've got the pull at the same time of this side here attracting now to the uh, North Pole to the South Pole. So we've got two actions happening at the same time. We're utilizing both sides, okay, of the field of the coil in this motor design. A lot of motors, you know, that people are building, they're actually just using just the coil like that, and they got the magnet here, bang, 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 and all this is wasted here. On this motor design here, we, we are using both sides, okay, of the coil at the same time. So that makes it interesting. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a few other tests and it will involve uh, reducing the current and seeing what happens when we add more magnets. Hold on. Okay, now we're back. And all I've done is I've put a resistor, a 10 ohm resistor, right here, in series uh, with my uh, positive side here. So now the uh, current is going to be reduced. So we can get a guide of what's happening right now because we'll be doing a few changes. So now when I activate the switch, okay, I get 440 milliamps coming out. And as you can see, it's, it's starting a little bit to, to want to lift the, the coil, but not, not enough to lift it, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add more magnets and see what happens. One on that side. And one on this side. Okay, so we're not going to change the current. The current is going to be again the same thing. All what we've added now is just more permanent magnets. And now we try it. And now we actually can hold the, that 80 grams is actually capable of holding up in the air. Right? You can see it now. So we're not adding any more current. Still 430 uh, milliamps, 440 milliamps around that range. And we're capable now of keeping that magnet up. So in this motor design you can add more and more magnets, more magnet power, permanent magnets, which is basically free of charge, and with less and less current you can get this motor to work, give you more and more work, which is I believe uh, not quite so in a regular magnet motor. Usually the stronger the magnets you put in there, the more current you're going to need to overcome that uh, sticky spot, basically. So that's why I believe this motor has a lot of potential. Now I'm going to pause the camera and do a few other things and we'll see uh, what happens with those changes. Okay, one small change that I did is just simply just added another piece here across onto the other side. Okay, and we activate the switch, and now it's, it's lifting on its own, right? Before it wasn't lifting on its own. Same current, but now it's lifting on its own. So what's happening in this motor design that's another real bonus, okay, is that... Um, the magnet here is south-south, but on the other side of the magnet, we've got a north, right? Now, what's happening is this north, and then this north, now is creating a field this way here, okay? And the coil is making a, a um, south-north, okay? And, but on the outside here of the coil, it's the opposite of the field that's here. So if we have here, in the center, in the core here, we've got, let's say, we've got our south here. As it's coming around here, halfway through the coil, it's changing here to a north. 
So again, now we have an opposite here happening, that if we had sides created, a bridge, something like this here, if we put this piece here on the side, unfortunately I can't get it to stick right now, okay, we should get more lift from, from our, uh, from our, with our current. This should go up even easier. Let's give it a try. Okay, so we are getting a better lift. We're getting a little bit of sticky spot now. What's happening is now the coil is fighting and rubbing, okay, against this here because it's pulling on that side. Now if I put another piece on the other side here of this core material, then maybe I'll be able to balance that out a little bit better. Uh, let's try it this way here. Bear with me. Let's try that. Yeah, so now we're getting a little bit more of a lift again. It's going up there. A little bit faster. And again, if I put these sides here all around, we'll get again a better lift. But now I can't keep it all together really because it's wanting to pull uh, all, all together inside. See how quick it is now? And it's not even aligned any, and you know, I'm just doing it very quickly. Now the pieces are falling in there. So what I'll do now is I'll stick all this stuff together. But before we, we go through that, okay, I'll take those pieces out. So as you see, we have a big change. We're, we're not getting any lift here right now, okay? I have to lift it up for it to lift on its own, okay? So just by adding these, we've already doubled the speed. I mean, it now is going faster and faster as we're building this bridge all around here, which is taking the benefit of the other side of the magnet and for benefiting, taking the magnetic field created on the outside of the coil, which is something that we don't even see in a motor design. Again, uh, people are building motors that, you know, you're only utilizing one side of the coil. Here we're utilizing two sides of the coil, and not just that, we're actually utilizing four sides of the coil. We're using the whole magnetic field built outside of the coil to uh, increase the amount of power it'll deliver for the amount of current. Now the other interesting uh, benefit in this model of uh, motor is uh, often a motor, as the uh, magnet goes by, or, or the core goes by, from the time the uh, coil is magnetized to the time it's demagnetized, there's a change. There's a change in inductance. And in this motor design, because the center of the core never comes off or away, or any changes happen, the inductance is identical from the time it's turned on to the time it's turned off. And here we have a polarity switch, and now the motor is going the other side in a back and forth motion. That's how the motor is going to work. But that's another bonus here is the inductance will be stable. We're utilizing both sides of the magnets. We're utilizing all sides, in internal center and the external sides of the coil. Therefore, capitalizing on all the magnetic field, putting it into work energy. That's the benefit of this motor, and um, if I fail to understand something, please uh, let me know, and uh, we can look at it. Uh, Peter Linderman had uh, commented on my uh, motor design a couple of years ago when I posted the first video, and uh, he said basically uh, the problem uh, with this uh, motor design, he says it's unique, and there's no other ones that has been made had been made like this, but uh, he said that the generator effect will actually uh, be the downfall of this motor. He says basically as the coil is moving, it is creating also a uh, electrical energy, and that would be fighting the electrical energy being sent to the uh, coil. 
Now, I don't know how much that's really going to affect it because basically as the coil is going this direction, as we, were, we have been shooting it, I've tested it and basically if we're sending current the one direction, okay, the current that, it, the little bit of current this thing is producing, it's not a very good generator, uh, the little bit of current that it is producing is going the same way that the current we're sending into it. So if we are sending in a positive uh, this, uh, you know, on one of the legs of the coil, the positive is also being created at that same leg. So I don't know what the big fight is about, but uh, I guess as I continue and uh, complete this motor and put a crankshaft on it and all that, uh, I'll be able to find out uh, what the real deal is on it. But from what uh, I have demonstrated to you right now is that you could clearly see that we're not adding any more energy in this coil and the more magnet power, ma just the strength of the magnets will actually determine the output of this motor. Um, I think uh, that's about all I'm going to share right now and uh, we'll post uh, this motor design uh, when I have uh, it more built uh, with the sides and all this glued together and uh, with a crankshaft. Thanks for watching. Bye now.